What does it mean to be a Christian? Based on who you ask, you're going to get very, very different answers. In, in 2021, the Cultural Research Center of Arizona actually did a survey where a full 69% of all Americans thought they were Christian. And I believe all of us understand that there's not anything that 69% of Americans agree on. So obviously, people are looking at different parameters. Well, since Christian was first used in the Bible, I think it's important to understand what the Bible says would be true about someone who calls himself a Christian. A Christian is a person basically who believes a couple of key things from scriptures. Number one, they believe that God created us. And as our creator, he has the right to set the rules and to decide what's going to happen. The Bible tells us in Psalms that our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. And we know that in the beginning, God created us. And in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible tells us that we were made in his image to enjoy a perfect relationship with him. God created us not so that we could do whatever what we wanted, but so that we could worship him. But God gave us a free will choice to do that. And man decided, instead of worshiping God, we wanted to worship ourselves. And we decided to break God's law. The Bible calls breaking God's law sin. Now, why is this sin a problem? Well, sin is a problem because God is not only our creator, God is also holy. And God is so holy. In fact, Isaiah tells us he's holy. First Peter 1 tells us that he's holy. And part of his holiness means that he's not able to be with sin. And because we have broken God's law and have sinned, we have put a barrier between us and God. Not only is he holy, not only is he creator, but also the Bible teaches us that God is just. Isaiah tells us that he loves judgment or justice. And what that means is that God punishes what's right and rewards what's good. But here's where many, many religions get it wrong. They think, well, if God punishes what's right and he rewards what's good, then we need to do as much good as we can so that when we stand before God, he'll allow us to come into heaven. But the problem with that is because we're human beings, we, we can't do good. The Bible tells us that all of our righteousnesses are filthy rags. As a human being, what we think is good is nowhere close to what God sees as good. It'd kind of be like asking a fish at the bottom of the ocean to try and do something dry. They could do their very best and they could come up with the most absolute driest thing they could ever dream of, but it would never even be close to actually being dry. And it's the same way with us. We can try our best. We can do everything within our power to try to be good, to try to act good, but in God's eyes, it's nowhere close. And the Bible tells us that one day we will all stand before God and he will judge us. And because he's just, that sin demands a response from God. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. In another place it says that by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. God's wrath is going to pour out on everybody and this death that the Bible is talking about is an eternal death. That's where hell comes into the picture. Hell is a place that is made where we are separated from the kindness of God and his wrath is poured out on the folks in a very just way against all of the sin that's been committed. So because we as human beings have sinned, we have earned this wrath. Now, the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death, but the next part of that verse says the gift of God is eternal life. Well, what is God's gift? You've probably heard it. You're probably familiar with John 3, 16. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's gift was Jesus Christ sent to this earth. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin and lived a perfect life. The Bible says he knew no sin. He never committed any sin, so he never had to die. He never had to go through any of God's wrath. But Jesus Christ willingly allowed himself to be put on the cross for us. The Bible says that God commended or showed his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, in judgment, kind of think of it this way, in judgment, when we all stand naked before God and he is judging us for our sins, if we are there alone, his wrath will be poured down on us. But Jesus Christ said, I will take God's wrath, kind of like an umbrella. If it's raining outside, Wherever that umbrella is, it's still raining on the umbrella, but if you get underneath, if you get in the umbrella, you don't get rained on. And the Bible tells us that if we're in Christ, we won't experience God's wrath. We can be in Him. Now, how do we do this? Well, 
before we find out how we do this, it's important to understand why Jesus Christ can take God's wrath. You see, he lived perfectly. He died on the cross for our sins. And the Bible tells us that three days later, he rose from the dead. That's so very important because that means that the payment was accepted. And when Jesus rose victoriously from the dead, and that's a historically verifiable fact that Jesus came out of the grave, that meant that God accepted his payment. And now we, if we're in Christ, we can be under that umbrella and never experience the wrath of God. Now, how do we do that? Well, some places tell you you have to go to church. Some places tell you you have to do this or do this. Some folks will say you've got to pray this prayer. Of course, in talking to God or interacting with God, anytime we interact with Him, it's probably going to be something like a prayer. But the reality is the proper response is us realizing that we have this problem of sin and that we need Christ and that He is the only way. And by placing our faith and trust in Christ, believing that He paid our debt and that He is the only answer to our sin, we can be in Christ. Are you ready to do that? You can express that to God right now. There's not a certain prayer you have to pray. It's simply understanding you're a sinner, understanding Jesus paid for that sin, and understanding that you want to be in Christ. Why don't you tell God right now, you want to be in Christ, want to experience God's love through Christ, and never ever have to pay, or never ever have to see the wrath of God, because you now know that you are a Christian.